Welcome to the Alcohol Tipping Point Podcast. I'm your host, Deb Maisner. I'm a registered nurse, health coach, and alcohol-free badass. I have found that there's more than one way to address drinking. If you've ever asked yourself if drinking is taking more than it's giving, or if you've found that you're drinking more than usual, you may have reached your own alcohol tipping point. The Alcohol Tipping Point is a podcast for you to find tips, tools, and thoughts to change your drinking. Whether you're ready to quit forever or a week, this is the place for you. You are not stuck and you can change. Let's get started. Well, welcome back to the Alcohol Tipping Point podcast. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about dry January, which is like one of my favorite months of the year because it's it's a month that it's so normalized not to drink. And I think that's a fantastic thing. And I think if you are listening to this and you're thinking about doing dry January, I would say go for it. And I would salute you, give you a high five. I think it's just a wonderful thing to do. And so I wanted to have on the show today one of my favorite people, Miss Judy Cook. She is actually one of the coaches, well, actually my only coach in the Alcohol a Day month that I do. So she's been helping out in the Alcohol a Day as a coach, gosh, most of this year, I think since March of this year. She's been with me and with the group since 2022. She's over three years alcohol-free Like I said, along the way, she became a sober coach. She inspired her husband to quit drinking. I also had Judy on episode 62, where she shared her story. So I'll link to that in the podcast notes. But welcome, Judy. I'm so glad that we're doing this podcast episode together about dry January. Oh, thank you for having me. I've been really looking forward to this. You know, thank you so much for letting me come. Well, can you share a little intro about yourself and how you've gotten to this point? Here we are. We're recording this December 18th of 2023. Yeah, of course I can. I mean, going back a while, March the 3rd, 2020 will always be on my mind because that is the day I stopped drinking after 42 years of daily drinking. And, you know, if I can stop, anybody can. I honestly thought I was the only person in the whole world with a problem. Who do I ask? I was embarrassed. Who can I tell? You know, I I knew I had a problem and I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go to AA in case I bumped into somebody I knew. (laughs) So on March the 3rd, I actually, I'd found an advert on Facebook. Simon Chappell, who, who was a coach and an author, was, was, advertising for a free half hour phone call so I plucked up the courage and booked this half hour phone call and on the day March the 3rd with my little dog and my mobile phone it was pouring with rain I crept into the woods behind my house because I didn't even want my husband to know and I waited for Simon to ring me we were on the phone for an hour and he said to me Judy you've already started to do the work you're on your journey. And he said he'd coach me. And he gave me lots of tips. And and there I was on my journey. And I skipped home. I skipped home because I told somebody. And it was such a relief. And from that day onwards, I immersed myself in everything sobriety could offer. I loved it. It was lockdown, by the way. It was the beginning of lockdown. And I couldn't go out and buy the drink. So I might as well stop. I couldn't work. I was, I'm was i a private tutor for children and I wasn't allowed to go to their houses. So I had 18 weeks of being home. So I used those 18 weeks to more or less revise, like for an exam about sobriety. I watched YouTubes. I read books. I journaled. I did Zooms. I joined as many groups as I could find. I did everything sober. I just immersed myself. And I bought every alcohol-free drink you could imagine so that I wasn't missing out. And my husband bought me a trolley. And I put all these drinks on the trolley. 
and it was fun. Uh, I did two Zooms a night, every night, for about 12 weeks. So that's how my journey started. And then it progressed. I went on my first ever sober holiday. It was a, a very short four-night cruise. Couldn't believe I could actually do it. And on the last night, when I hadn't had a drink, I danced, danced and jigged in my cabin. Judy, you've done it. I, I can't explain the excitement. Coming off that cruise, we went to see Simon Chapel, who lived near Southampton, just for a cup, cup of coffee. Because I had said to him, I need to do that cruise without a drink and I'll come and tell you I've done it. And as we were in his house, my husband said, you know what? I'm going to stop drinking because I've seen how Judy's changed. So as we drove home, that was September, he got home, he poured all his lagers away, he poured all his Bacardi's away, and he started his journey as well. He's now two years, two months, and two days sober. <laughs> Love it. Well, then on, I said, well, I'm going to help other people, you know, so let's let's get cracking and let's get qualified as a sobriety coach. So my husband and I both did it together. It was 100 hours of studying, a work case, an essay of 1,000 words. We both passed the exam, and we're both coaches. We love it. And, you know, I've got this little saying here that says, when you get to where you're going, turn around and help her too. For there was a time not long ago when she was you. So that's what we do. We love, we love our sobriety life. It's brought us closer together. In fact, it's changed us both. We don't judge. We don't catastrophize. There's lots of things we don't do anymore. And we, help, we try to help as many people as we can. So it can be done. I, I say a little mantra every single morning. Nothing I do today requires me to drink alcohol. I colour my tracker in every day. I write a little journal every day. And at night time, I bookend my day with three things. Three things I'm grateful for. Three things I'm proud of. And three things I could have done better. That's that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, so helpful because, I mean, you already have shared some useful tips about your journey and what worked for you. And the point of this show is just to help people who are looking to change their drinking, you know, whether they're just doing dry January because they want to take a break or they're done, like they want to divorce alcohol. And so, yeah, I think it's just wonderful to have the opportunity for people to address their drinking in a safe, non-judgmental way without shame. And so that's why, you know, that's why I made the Alcohol Holiday, which is the monthly dry group that I run. I've been running them since July of 2021. And it's just a way for people to practice not drinking with science and compassion-based tools and community and support. And so along the way, I just wanted to invite Judy to help out because as you heard from her intro, she's she's really passionate about helping people and supporting people. Yeah. P passionate is the word. It, it has got to be. Every morning when you wake up, it's you feel so great. You feel so excited. You almost have butterflies in your tummy. It's like reinventing yourself. <laughs> As I, I was talking to somebody once and I said to them, how much do you drink? And the answer was, all of us. That was me. I, 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 that was me. I, I couldn't just have one. And so to stop drinking, it's, it's a different journey for everybody. But nobody judges, and your group is so friendly, and you all get to know each other, and you can tell your story. Once you've told your story, you're halfway there. I always say, stop trying to stop. Stop trying to stop. You've got to educate yourself. You've got to do the modules and learn about what alcohol does to you, and that's the way to go around it, I think. It just takes time. As you said, we're practicing. 
I mean, as a private tutor, I have a little girl at the moment and she's trying to do her nine times table. She can't just suddenly do it in five minutes. She has to practice it and practice it. And then it gets a little bit better. Same with when another little girl, I'm doing handwriting with her. She has to practice her handwriting. And that's the same with this journey. We're practicing. Yeah. And I think like with your story, because you you spent 40 plus years drinking. And so it takes a while to unwind it. And I think it's good to point out because a lot of people think they're they're too old to change. And you changed your drinking when you were what, in your late 60s? Yes. I mean, I'm 71 in February, you know. Yeah. It's never too late. You've got to make what is familiar unfamiliar and start. You have to re, you have to have a new identity. And that's what I've managed to do at this age, and it's gross. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's focus on dry January. Let's talk about dry January. I I told you I'm like, I'm gonna pull up a few fun facts. So I, I thought that dry January started in the UK in 2013, but then I looked up, it actually started decades ago in Finland as part of a post-World War II effort to help the Finnish people, like Finnish public, control their alcohol use. Did you know that? No, I never, never knew that. Never knew that. <laughs> yeah. And then in 2013, that's when the UK and other European countries kind of relaunched it as a public health initiative uh, to encourage people to take a break in January. And since then, it has grown exponentially, which is wonderful. I was actually just reading that there they did a Nielsen survey and and that's like a data market measurement firm, but they were saying that they are anticipating 44%. So over a third of Americans are going to participate in dry wow. January. Wow. That's a lot. That's yeah. Quite that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. And they know that in 2020, that a third of legal age Americans participated in dry January. So I just think it's such a great month to do a, a dry month and, and see where you are with your relationship with drinking because it's so easy to just, you have a go-to statement like, hey, I'm doing dry January. Because yeah. I think that can be hard for people. Yes. And, and with January, you, you're only looking at the months. You're not looking further than that because I think that's important. Short term, if you say I'm not going to drink forever, you can't do this. It's too scary. So just January, and as you say, I'm doing dry January. That, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and you're not alone. You're definitely not alone. The other thing I wanted to share was just how much health improvements you can see after 30 days without alcohol. You can see improved sleep better skin, improved liver function. Some people lose weight. You can save money. You can have improved mental health. Like it can help if you have anxiety or depression, which, you know, a lot of people are saying they're drinking because they're anxious or depressed. But the thing is, is that alcohol is contributing to your anxiety and your depression. So even just a month off is going to have such a huge benefit to your health. I think one of the main things for me was saving money. That was massive. You know, putting away whatever you spend every day mounts up and you can see how much you've saved. That is a real, really good one. And you become, you like yourself more. You really do. You like yourself. You're not trying to hide behind alcohol. Yeah. Did did you, before you like divorced alcohol, did you do dry months? Did you do dry Januaries? No. No. Never, no. No. I just decided one day enough's enough. I woke up, enough's enough. Judy, enough's enough. I've had enough to drink for 42 years. I don't need any more. No, I just stopped. 
Yeah, I I was like the queen of taking breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of dry months, I gotta say, but they Whoa. were helpful and they, oh yeah. I mean, I had so many day ones and I had so many uh, dry Januaries, dry Julys. I used to do, I used to run. And so I would take, there was like this big annual race every year when I was running, but I used to take the 30 days off prior. So I, I was just constantly, I guess, proving to myself that I didn't have a problem. But at the same time, I was also realizing with those breaks, like, wow, I feel so much better when I don't drink. And so I just think, I just think they're good for people to evaluate their relationship with alcohol. I do think a lot of times we're doing them on our own or just with willpower. And I will say I didn't make big changes in my drinking until I joined groups, until I was with other people, until I got support. And then I was really able to shift my drinking. I agree. You, you can't do it on your own. You're fumbling about, not knowing what to do. You need people. You need connection. Absolutely. Because well, they're your cheerleaders, you... aren't they? They're your cheerleaders. Yeah, and there's just so much comfort in knowing that you're not alone and then having other people go through this with you. So much comfort. comfort. So what would you say are your top tips for people who are doing the alcohol holiday or doing, you know, taking a break from drinking or doing dry January? What are your top tips? I, I would say number one is definitely write down your why. Decide on your why. Why do you want to stop? Why do you want to stop and have a dry January? Is it for health? Is it because you're worried about too much drinking? Is it whatever it is? Write down your why. Once you've done your why, you can do your how. But I think the why comes first. And also, commit to yourself. Even in the drinker's mind, you are going to say to yourself, I am doing dry January. Don't buy it. Don't pour it. Don't drink it. And write all these things down. Every day that you don't drink in January, pat yourself on the back. Celebrate every single milestone. Wow. And when you haven't had a drink in January, say January the 4th, 5th, whatever, you say, oh, that's the new me. That's me. And shut, call out your name, Judy. That's me. I'm a non-drinker. You know, again, if you have a craving, if you shout, not shout out, if you say out your name, it stops those cravings. You know, when you were a little girl or whatever, somebody would say, Judy, stop doing that. Immediately, you'd stop thinking of it. So that's a really helpful tool. Um, get as much knowledge as you can. What is alcohol? Oh, it's a poison. It's ethanol. Why are we going to be drinking that? Uh, another little thing I do is you have to make what is comfortable uncomfortable. So step out of that comfort zone. And what we call it is a new neural pathway. We're going to start building a new pathway that we've never been down before and it's really exciting get excited about the journey yeah thank you for those tips yeah I, th I think that's one of the things that I admire about you is that you have been like held this level of excitement and learning and curiosity that I think has served you well as contagious for other people who are around you I don't know what it is about it. I think I always thought about it as, oh, I'm going to miss out and I'm going to lose something. But it's not. It's the opposite. The three Ds. Decide. Be dedicated and be determined. Those are my three Ds and my three Cs. Coaching. A coach helps. Like you, Debbie. Consistency. And commitment. You know, you've got to be consistent. 
you've got to be consistent and what was the word I was looking for? Dedication, discipline, sorry, discipline. You've got to discipline yourself and you'll get there. Yeah, and I think with discipline, it, it's interesting because I think for a lot of us, we 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 think about discipline differently. And so I just remind people, like, there are a lot of things that we do that we don't want to do in that moment, you know, like brush your teeth, do laundry, pick up the kids from school. But But discipline is doing things anyway. And so I think that kind of goes in hand when you were talking about commitment, like, okay, there are going to be times during the month where you're going to be like, why the hell did I do dry January? <laughs> what did I sign up for? But going back to what you said, like, okay, start out committed, be disciplined and, and write down your whys and be committed and, and just do it anyway. Like never question the decision. Some Absolutely. people... Yeah, some people like tattoo that up on themselves. <laughs> and every, every morning when you wake up, look at your why. You know, remind yourself of your why. And I always find that affirmations and mantras are super helpful. A mantra is a melody, they call it a melody of the mind. Write down a mantra. For instance, I am in charge of my life. A life of sobriety is my present and my future. I let go of everything that doesn't serve me. Now, these mantras and affirmations have really helped me. And you say them in the present tense and you repeat them as often as you can, say in the mirror, and it makes you start believing in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself and you've got to be your own champion. Mm, you know, okay, I always yeah. think, don't look up at the mountain and think you're at the bottom. You're already at the top. You're already at the top. If you're getting to do dry January, you are a champion. You are. I, I like that. It's such a good reminder because one of the things I really focus on is self-kindness and self-compassion. And I want to come back to this because it comes up so much like when you do have a setback or, you know, you do end up drinking and you didn't want to. But I do want to, before we come back to that, I just want to share some of, I, I love all your tips and the mindset tips. I'm going to share some of my practical tips because I'm, I'm like huge on practical tips. <laughs> so, you know, like my number one tip is to eat, to, yeah, to make sure that you are keeping your blood sugar stable. Because a lot of the times it's low blood sugar or even dehydration that can lead to a craving. You know, sometimes you just are hungry. And so going back to that super simple analogy of halt, like when you're having a craving, are you hungry? That's the H in halt and address that. And now is not the time to like do an extreme diet or tr run a marathon. Like if the only thing you do, if your only goal is removing alcohol, that's enough. That yeah, is going to help you in so many ways, right? And and so the other parts of the HALT acronym are the A is for anxiety or anger. And so if you're feeling that, address that. And so, and maybe it's just part of just acknowledging like, hey, I noticed that I'm feeling angry or I noticed that I'm anxious and and sometimes even saying it aloud, going back to you talking to yourself and saying like, Judy, <laughs> even, yeah, just saying like, Debbie, you are feeling anxious and that's yeah. okay. It's okay yeah. to feel anxious. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. That feeling's not going to kill you. A drink might, but a feeling's not, and they that's will pass and your cravings will pass too. And then the other part of HALT is the L is for lonely and the T is for tired. So if you're lonely, take advantage of being part of a group. Check in with someone, call someone, text someone. And if you're tired, you know, we can't always rest when we're tired. If we could, that's number one. But even just drinking a tall glass of water can help your energy level, even taking a 10-minute walk. So try those things. 
what are some of your practical tips for dry I've January? Got, I've got this like a new find a new hobby, something that you used to really enjoy doing as a child. What brings you joy? Well, I just got myself a new puppy. <laughs> And my hands are so busy with my puppy, <laughs> I haven't got time to drink. <laughs> Start baking. If you used to love baking when you were little, reward yourself. I remember thinking, well, if I can't drink, I can have ice cream or I can do this or I can go and buy a new jumper. Reward yourself. I've also got here, plan ahead. Always plan ahead. You're going out somewhere. What am I going to drink before I get there? Have it in your mind. These are all little tools, aren't they, for our tool, our sober toolbox. Mm -hmm. I remember first hearing about a sober toolbox. I didn't know what it was. I thought I had to go and buy a toolbox. <laughs> but tell um, me about, like, tell me about your sober toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the sober toolbox is is brilliant, and it leads you on a sparkly sober path. You know, all these little things like the halt, alcohol three drinks. Talking to your future self. Talk to your future self. Be so in, in a, well, end of January, February the 1st. You're going to be so proud of yourself that you did dry January. Be curious um, and, and be kind to yourself. You know, as you say, just do one thing at a time and take it one day at a time. Take it one hour at a time. I love tracking. You know, tick each day off or colour a box. You don't want to break the chain. That's the beauty of it. I find it really helpful. So those are a few yeah. of my little tips. I love them. I love them. There's so many tips. There are, so, yes. Well, what do you think are some typical challenges that people come up against and how to how would you address overcoming them? I, th I think, you know, if you come in from work and every night you go to the fridge and get your wine, it becomes a habit. And that is going to be the hardest thing. So in January, why not go to your fridge, get out an alcohol-free drink, a wonderful one. I used to love No Seco, And get yourself a really nice glass. Still do the ritual with a different liquid. You're not missing out. It's a habit. Like the challenges, you're on autopilot. And I, I love that, you know, keep the ritual, but replace the drink and have something you look forward to. So you were saying the NA Prosecco or NA beer was really, really helpful for me, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you, you know, join Alcohol a Day, get in with people and You've always got someone to contact. What do they say? Pick up the phone before you pick up a drink. Speak to somebody. If if, if you're going to have to socialize with some drinkers, well, don't don't go. Don't go for January. Don't put yourself in a difficult position. So you set your own boundaries. I quite enjoy being at home these days. <laughs> we don't seem to go out much. <laughs> Yeah, I I love being at home too. I, I I do think that that is a big challenge for people though is social events and like you said, like you don't have to go to everything. No. Um, and you you maybe even don't want to go to everything. A lot of the things we've just been tolerating and drinking to tolerate them. So really evaluating like. Is this something I feel obligated to go to or do I actually want to go to it? And finding mm -hmm. other things that you enjoy and exploring that. But if you are at, well, I should add, I'm going to have Beck Sweller is going to do a podcast. It's coming out in January and it's all about socializing sober and it's so, so helpful. So look for that. And so I think that will help people when they are navigating social situations and how to make it more fun or not go or whatnot. But, but I think, like you said, like you don't have to go to no. everything. You really don't. I, I, you mentioned cravings a, a few minutes ago, and that can be scary for some people. It really can. And I think the thing to do with the craving is, as you said, you know it's going to pass. 
And I've got a little tip for a craving. It's called the 54321. If you do have a craving, just breathe and perhaps go outside even and look for five things, five things that you can see. Then look for four things or that you can listen to, you can hear. Three things you can smell. Two things you can touch. And one thing that you can taste. By the time you've done that exercise, you're not thinking about having a drink. I, I've tried it and it works. It's just amazing. And the other one to do with cravings is gratitude. Just spend like 30 seconds of something that you're grateful for. Even sit down and just jot, jot it down and your cravings will go. Someone once said a craving's like a cloud in the sky. Just watch it go past, go over your head, it's gone. And then pat yourself on the back, you've done it, you've done it. Yeah, I, th I think that cravings are something you can really learn from because it is, they are uncomfortable, but they'll pass. They are a feeling, they are a desire. They're, but all feelings, all emotions, will pass. No feeling is final. And yeah. so I think that is a good reminder for people. And then going back to just, you know, either eating something or having an alternative drink or just drinking a big glass of water or taking yourself out of the situation, changing your environment, chewing some gum, you know, just kind of pulling in all the stops because sometimes it's hard to sit with a craving. So at first it can be really helpful to use distraction to help yeah. you ride out the craving too. Yeah. You can go for a walk, just go for a 10 minute walk. That, that would, could help. Um, so uh, I think one of the main things for me would also be make sure there's no alcohol in the house. Remove it all. Well, that's a trigger, isn't it? Remove the booze. Remove this. And the yeah, voice. Yeah, I think. Often. What What about if your partner's drinking, though? What if they're well, not doing it with you? Yeah, now that can be tricky because obviously when I stopped, Richard was still drinking. He, he, drink, he was drinking Foster's. Do you have Foster's in America? Yeah, the beer. <laughs> yeah, the beer. He had Foster's, right? I, we, had, we had a big tall fridge. He put his Foster's in the fridge. And I'd help him to go and buy them. But he'd want a cold one. So he'd say to me, can you just rotate them so that the cold ones are at the front? <laughs> oh, what a palaver. But I just let him get on with it. Because don't forget, it's your journey. It's You're doing it for you. It's your dry January. And that's all that matters. Let them get on with it. you doing yours. Yeah, and I think there's lots of things that we do as a couple that our mate doesn't do you know whether it's diet or exercise or certain foods or whatnot and and it's like we can just let them but yeah. maybe maybe they can you know maybe you have a go-to drink it's red wine or something and just don't have red wine in the house or if they're still going to have alcohol in the house have it somewhere else Absolutely. or have them have them hide it so only they know where it is just to keep yeah. it out of your your sight line can be helpful yeah. i think yeah. i agree and also you know go, go shopping in january you don't need to go down the alcohol aisle just put your list of what you need to shop for go and get it and don't go down the alcohol aisle you don't need to yeah, that's a good idea. And if you want to order your NA drinks, you can get them online. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about managing setbacks, managing slip-ups, because, I mean, they're going to happen. And so what is your advice for that? I call a setback a slip, and the word slip means so sobriety losing its power. Slip. You have a slip, what do you do? You get up and you carry on. Oh, I've learned, I've learned something. It's a data point. What, what made me drink? Again, write it down and you learn from it. 
You're not a failure. Nobody's a failure. You have, you've had a drink, you learn from it, and you get back up. Simple as that. We're only human. We're totally human. And yeah. I mean, mistakes, they're how we learn. And, yeah. and so, I mean, here you are a teacher, you've been a head mistress. And so I think about our kids, think about our students and how we don't expect them to be perfect. And if they mess up on a test or reading or math or whatever, we don't send them back to first grade. No. We just, we correct it, we learn from it and we move forward. And I think that is so important. And so I think a lot of people really dwell on the slip ups instead of focusing on what is going well? What 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 is working for you? How can you do more of that? Yes, learn from, you know, when you ended up drinking and you didn't want to. Learn from it, own it, and then move on. Move on, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Move on. A new day, carry on. Yeah. Yeah, love it, love it. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Alcohol A Day group because we wanted to invite people to join us for January. We've been running them um, every month. And so, like I said, it's just, it's a month to practice not drinking, to really reevaluate your relationship with alcohol. How it works is you get a daily email with content and information there's activities for you to do, something to keep you occupied so that you're you're learning, you're getting inspiration, and you're, you know, you're getting support. And so there's also this kind of like a it's not on Facebook, but it's a private group and there's a feed on there where you can chat with other people. And then we also do meetings twice a week. So I host one and Judy hosts one. And so the meetings, I think are almost like the secret sauce. That is where you connect with other people. You see you're not alone. You share your stories. You share e advice with each other. We allow crosstalk. It's not like AA or anything. And there's no shaming. There's no judgment. Like we're all there to lift each other up and help each other out. And what what would you say about the alcohol a day or what is helpful about it? Well, first of all, I, I really looked, especially when I first started it, I looked forward to this every day email coming, opening up the module. Wow, there's so much content in each module to, 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 to learn. It really is. The worksheets are great. And of course, you have a little tracker, don't you, at the beginning of the month, which is my favorite one. The meetings are great because if you're not in the mood for a Zoom, I always say, run to it because then you will be in the mood and you listen, you get advice, you listen to other people's stories. It's called hope, hearing other people's experiences. And they, people realize that they're not the only ones, you know, you meet some lovely people and you really get friendly with them. So go for us. It's the most amazing set of Honestly, I mean, I've been in it a while and I will never, I'll always be in it. <laughs> and you can see your own progress. When you do the modules, you, tick it, you can tick it off and you can see your progress. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so I, I would love to invite whoever's listening to do the next alcohol a day. You can just go to alcoholtippingpoint.com slash alcoholiday. You can use the code DRY, D-R-Y, all capitals, to save 20%. Also, if if this if times are rough for you and you can't afford it, just reach out to me. I am happy to help you out. You can email me at deb at alcoholtippingpoint.com. And then I also have a lot of free resources on the website too. There have a free dry guide, a free mocktail recipe book, a free 10-day email challenge, free 100 questions to change your drinking. So there are lots of free resources, but if you want to get like extra help, have a really kick-ass dry January, I would love to have you join the Alcohol Holiday. And 
you can meet me and Judy and we can just help you out. And we, we are cheering for you. That's for sure. Absolutely. We are cheering. Yeah. And that, you know, we're all champions, aren't we on in the group? We're all champions. Yes. We're all rooting for each other and we are just letting you know that you're not alone, that you're worth it. And that on the other side of alcohol is a lot of freedom and a better life, an easier life for you. So if you're thinking about it, would love to have you. Yeah. And of course, that's what you're doing in this group, isn't it? You're practicing not picking up that drink. Yes, we are. Well, any other things you would add before we wrap up, Judy, to someone who's listening and they're on the fence or maybe they're just feeling stuck. Like, you know, what would you have to say? Just be brave. Go for it. Have the courage. Give it a go. You're not going to lose anything. And there's people all around helping you. Just give it a go. Your life will change. It really will. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if it, that's all you do is remove alcohol, it's going to have this cascading effect on the rest of your life. It's going to improve your work, your relationships, your life with your children, your partner, your friendships, your physical health, your mental health. You know, I'm not saying it's going to solve everything, but it's going to solve quite a few and and just make a vast improvement in your life. It is a gift to give yourself. Absolutely. It's a marvelous journey. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Judy, for being part of this and for all you do inside the Alcohol Holiday and inside the Facebook groups and other places you are. I really appreciate you and you are a wonderful person and making oh, a big difference. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you for, for what you do for this group. You know, it's, it's marvelous. Um, and a lot of happy people in your group. I know that. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Alcohol Tipping Point podcast. Please share and review the show so you can help other people too. I want you to know I'm always here for you. So please reach out and talk to me on Instagram at Alcohol Tipping Point and check out my website, alcoholtippingpoint.com for free resources and help. No matter where you are on your drinking journey, I want to encourage you to just keep practicing, keep going. I promise you are not alone and you are worth it. Every day you practice not drinking is a day you can learn from. I hope you can use these tips we talked about for the rest of your week. And until then, talk to you next time.